So the one realization I've made uh, while we were doing this is that we should probably actually do a little bit more work in the simulator because the simulator is very good with um, this type of stuff and we're only gonna be dealing with one touch input at a time for now. Um, so maybe we should think about a little bit more about trying this out in the simulator. So we know that this line is being printed out. What we don't know is why that isn't working. So I'm pretty sure we can figure that out in the simulator. What I've done is I've actually hooked the touch down up to the mouse. So if you just do a general search for touch down, I'll show you what I mean. This is purely on PC. So if you look at the input manager, it's got a handle touchdown. And in the game app, there's this mysterious call to the input manager to handle touchdown. I'll show you where that happens. This is the game app's handle touchdown and it passes it down over there. I'll show you a little bit more. If we look at this. So the uh, Marmalade or Airplay stuff has a really good feature where if you retrieve the point of this data in the correct way, the, the state of the pointer, which is their version of the uh, mouse cursor in the right way, you can actually sort of double that up as your mouse pointer and as a touch input. Um, there's other ways you can get multiple touch inputs uh, similarly, um, but for many cases, this is sufficient. It'll be enough for us to get going in the meantime anyway. So what that means essentially is handle touch down will still work on the PC. Um, I should actually have done this in the first place, but it's good. At least we were able to get a game deploying on my iPhone and have a look at what the problem is there. So we can probably fix a, a, the bulk of the problem in this simulator here. So let's give it a quick run through and see what happens on the PC version when this is being when this is being touched by handle touchdown. Okay, so as you can see, we have our quadrant. The left one is almost invisible, but you can sort of see it. Let's see uh, what happens when we move. We're just going to move this over and get the upper window up over here. Just so we can sort of see both at the same time. Let's see what happens when uh, I drag my mouse up on the left quadrant. And drop the mouse. Okay, so now we're going to stop the program and just have a quick look and see what we've got. I really need to get rid of these messages, so I'll do that in the next step of the tutorial. Okay. So we've got a handle touch down. The position is 325,696. And now this is that extra logging we added to the overlaps point method that's being called right now. So immediately I think I can see the problem here. And that's that this point X is... Well, no, actually this, this should be okay. It should fall within those two values. So 3 to 5 is greater than or equal and smaller than. 720, this might be the problem because if you look closely here, oh no, that should be right. The test may be failing on this one. Top equals zero. So let's have a closer look at that test before we continue. So this top bottom test is what's disturbing me. We need to have a closer look at that. I don't think that that's, that's happening correctly. So we look at quadrant, oh, not that one. We look at quadrant contain screen point. In here it does a overlaps point. So it's looking at top. That's very interesting. So this object has a, has a top. We may need to check, because the top is being printed out here, bottom point point y top. It almost looks like the top isn't correct for the quadrant. So if we could look back over here, in the quadrant contains screen point the left quadrant may actually not be correct so we'll just put a breakpoint in there we'll run the keep running the program and we'll do it again let's have a quick look at this left quadrant top is zero bottom is 720 that looks okay but what happens when we go in here let's step into this function it just takes a couple of seconds it's the very very first time we step it's possible that our trace statement is also incorrect. Let's see what we get. Yeah, this looks this looks okay now. I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work. Well, another very nice thing we can do in the debugger is we can actually drag these things in as watches. For that, we do have to have the window pinned. 
This is extremely useful. You can actually evaluate simple statements in the watch window, which is a lot quicker than figuring out by eyeballing it. Okay. So those two evaluates are true, so that's fine. So that part of the test has worked. So this is useful if you want to just save a little bit of time. Oh, okay. So bottom is greater than or equal to point y. Point y is 604 and bottom is 720. So yeah, I can see how that, why that's going to happen. What probably needs to happen here is that top, we should swap these around. Okay, so this, this is called in quite a few places, so we may need to make some other changes here. But this is probably the result of a change in my coordinate system earlier on when I was busy porting the code to um, AirPlay, which is now my late. So let's try that and see what we get. We'll just take a breakpoint in this again. This is the beauty of the simulator because it's so similar to what's happening on the mobile device. You can often get away with doing things like this on in Visual Studio. So put it down and let's see what happens now. Just wait for it to get there. Okay. So now both of these are actually old, so we're going to get rid of them. And let's pop these two back in. So all of these have to evaluate to true. Okay, that's looking a lot better. All right, so I think this is now going to return the value that we want. Yeah, so it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely going into the right place now. I'm just going to disable that other breakpoint. Okay. Okay, I think the um, physics engine has died because of the thing, so we'll just restart it. This is something I really have to look at. I believe that it's not stepping the physics engine properly. So we'll just pop the upward window up there. Yeah, something is definitely going wrong as soon as I do this. Um, I believe what's actually happening is that our force that's being applied is way too, way too big. So as you can see here, it's applying a ridiculous force. So we'll need to go and have a quick look at that. Why is it applying this enormous force? We don't really don't want that I and mean, it's it's actually killing our graphics engine current boost touch point okay so what's happening here is that it's actually we will start as a line for way too long we can't even read it it's actually applying this touch boost force so we need to just do a little breakpoint here and figure out why this magnitude vector is so enormous. The start boost point is set when the state begins, so we'll just check that that's all. Well, when we move from no boost into the boosting state, that is set just the once. That's the only other place, and the current boost point is set during handle touch move, which is also called when the mouse moves. So that should be okay. Let's investigate a little bit more closely what the values of those things are because the, the value size of this vector that we're getting is ridiculous it's it should not be nowhere near that big it's actually moving our camera into some crazy space okay so the touch magnitude is wrong because the current touch boost point is wrong now we need to investigate a little bit more why it's wrong so just do a search for that one Keep searching. Okay, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm not really sure, because this all happens based on mouse movement, it's almost impossible to put actual breakpoints and stuff into checkers because you, you would screw up your breakpoints. So what I can do instead is I can print. We can just print out the values of these. Since that's the only other, there's only one place where it does get assigned. And now that I've said that, I've actually I've been thinking about it a little bit more, and I think that this current boost touch point is actually uninitialized when we're first hitting this update function, which is interesting. Um, what we what may actually be happening here is now that I think about it, is the handle touch move maybe getting called after update, and this is update we're in here. Update maybe getting called first, and it doesn't have a chance to initialize this the first time. So that's, that's my hunch as to what this problem actually is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to 
initialize it to the same values because initially it'll be the same it won't be any different because your finger won't have moved when you start the touch so let's just give that a quick go just make sure we don't have any break points for now Just look at the output and see what happens. And now this is a lot better. Well, it's not crashing first of all. Let's look at what force it's applying. It's only applying a very small force. And has that force changed? Yeah, the force actually changed over time, so that's good. Let's see if we can have it. It's not having any effect at this stage, but I think that's because the force that's being applied is too small. But we can change that. So this is where we start to do some interesting stuff. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a static and not make it a const so that I can just change it to random values. And let's make that 2.0, so twice whatever the delta is. So it was applying a force of 10, which is a pretty large force. I'm not actually sure why that wasn't doing anything. It'd be interesting to find out what it was doing. Okay, so I really don't think that this is working at all. Let's have a closer look at the output. So the force it's applying is 82. That's a pretty huge force. Let's see what a little bit more. That's a massive amount of force for it to be applying. And I really don't think that this is right. Because if you look at the other apply force over here, it looks very similar. So what we have to do now is figure out why that isn't working for us. So it's multiplying it by touch boost force. What I think we should actually do is make another float called final force. And I'm surprised we haven't had a compiler error yet because most compilers won't allow you to create variables inside a break, inside a switch block. So let's pop that into a variable just to make it a little bit easier to debug this. It's also possible that it's applying it in the wrong direction, which would make sense. Actually, so just as an experiment, like that won't actually change what happens, but it would if we change the sign. So it may actually be applying it in the wrong direction because we have to change the sign for the one over here for this one. So let's see what will happen when we change this one's sign. That's the other possibility. Yeah, it's definitely still... Ah, yeah, so it was the sign. Okay, that makes sense. That's fine. All right, so as you can see, I have to drag my mouse from the bottom, click drag all the way up and that's going to be a pretty poor input model for the iPhone if you have to drag your hand all the way up the screen just to get anything out of it so this is progress this is progress this obviously means we need to multiply this probably by something like a factor of four just to I should actually just have changed it and kept running it's a little bit silly there because that's why I made it static in the first place so we can just tweak this value until we get something that approaches so roughly what we want. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Yeah, alright. I, I think we were going to go with that. 